Welcome to Civil Engineering for Learners by Dr. K. Aravinthan. Waste Management Hazardous Waste Treatment Physical and Chemical Treatment Filtration and Separation Filtration is a method for separating solid particles from a liquid using a porous medium. The driving force in filtration is a pressure gradient caused by gravity, centrifugal force, vacuum, or pressure greater than atmospheric pressure. The application of filtration for the treatment of hazardous waste falls into the following categories. I. Clarification. Suspended solid particles less than 100 ppm, parts per million, concentration are removed from an aqueous stream. This is usually accomplished by depth filtration and cross-flow filtration and the primary aim is to produce a clear aqueous effluent, which can either be discharged directly or further processed. D. Dewatering. Dewatering of slurries of typically 1% to 30% solids by weight. Here, the aim is to concentrate the solids into a phase or solid form for disposal or further treatment. This is usually accomplished by cake filtration. The filtration treatment, for example, can be used for the neutralization of strong acid with lime or limestone, or precipitation of dissolved heavy metals as carbonates or sulfides followed by settling and thickening of the resulting precipitated solids as slurry. The slurry can be dewatered by cake filtration and the effluent from the settling step can be filtered by depth filtration prior to discharge. 2. Chemical Precipitation this is a process by which the soluble substance is converted to an insoluble form either by a chemical reaction or by a change in the composition of the solvent to diminish the solubility of the substance in it. Settling and or filtration can then remove the precipitated solids. In the treatment of hazardous waste, the process has wide applicability in the removal of toxic metals from aqueous wastes by converting them to an insoluble form. This includes wastes containing arsenic, barium, cadmium, chromium, copper, lead, mercury, nickel, selenium, silver, thallium, and zinc. The sources of waste containing metals are metal plating and polishing, inorganic pigment, mining, and the electronic industries. 3. Chemical Oxidation and Reduction redox. The oxidation state of one reactant is raised, while that of the other reactant is lowered. When electrons are removed from an ion, atom, or molecule, the substance is oxidized and when electrons are added to a substance, it is reduced. Such reactions are used in the treatment of metal-bearing wastes, sulfides, cyanides, and chromium and in the treatment of many organic wastes such as phenols, pesticides, and sulfur-containing compounds. Some of the commonly used oxidizing agents are sodium hypochlorite, hydrogen peroxide, calcium hypochlorite, potassium permanganate, and ozone. Reducing agents are used to treat wastes containing hexavalent chromium, mercury, organometallic compounds, and chelated metals. In general, chemical treatment costs are highly influenced by chemical costs. This oxidation and reduction treatment tends to be more suitable for low concentration, less than 1%, in wastes. 4. Solidification and Stabilization Solidification this refers to a process in which materials are added to the waste to produce a solid. It may or may not involve a chemical bonding between the toxic contaminant and the additive. Stabilization. This refers to a process by which waste is converted to a more chemically stable form. Subsuming solidification, stabilization represents the use of a chemical reaction to transform the toxic component into a new, non-toxic compound or substance. Evaporation. Evaporation is defined as the conversion of a liquid from a solution or slurry into vapor. Evaporation is used in the treatment of hazardous waste and the process equipment is quite flexible and can handle waste in various forms, aqueous, slurries, sludges, and tars. Evaporation is commonly used as a pre-treatment method to decrease quantities of material for final treatment. It is also used in cases where no other treatment method was found to be practical, such as in the concentration of trinitrotoluene TNT, for subsequent incineration. 6. Ozonation Ozone is a relatively unstable gas consisting of three oxygen atoms per molecule, O3, and is one of the strongest oxidizing agents known. 
It can be substituted for conventional oxidants such as chlorine, hydrogen peroxide, and potassium permanganate. Ozone and UV radiations have been used to detoxify industrial organic wastes, containing aromatic and aliphatic polychlorinated compounds, ketones, and alcohols. 2. Thermal Treatment 1. Incineration Incineration can be regarded as either a pre-treatment of hazardous waste, prior to final disposal or as a means of valorizing waste by recovering energy. It includes both the burning of mixed solid waste or the burning of selected parts of the waste stream as a fuel. Rolysis. This is defined as the chemical decomposition or change brought about by heating in the absence of oxygen. This is a thermal process for the transformation of solid and liquid carbonaceous materials into gaseous components and the solid residue containing fixed carbon and ash. In the first step, wastes are heated separating the volatile contents, example, combustible gases, water vapor, etc., from non-volatile char and ash. In the second step volatile components are burned under proper conditions to assure the incineration of all hazardous components. The pyrolysis process can be applied to solids, plastic, sludges, and liquid wastes. Materials containing salts and metals, which melt and volatilize at normal incineration temperatures. Materials like sodium chloride, NaCl, zinc, Zn, and lead, Pb, when incinerated may cause refractory spalling and fouling of the heat exchanger surface. 3. Biological Treatment Biodegradable wastes are suitable for land treatment. Radioactive wastes, highly volatile, reactive, flammable liquids, and inorganic wastes such as heavy metals, acids, and bases, cyanides, and ammonia are not considered for land treatment. Land treatability of organic compounds often follows a predictable pattern for similar types of compounds. 2. Enzymatic Systems Enzymes capable of transforming hazardous waste chemicals into non-toxic products can be harvested from microorganisms grown in mass culture. Such crude enzyme extracts derived from microorganisms have been shown to convert pesticides into less toxic and persistent products. The factors of moisture, temperature, aeration, soil structure, organic matter content, seasonal variation, and the availability of soil nutrients influence the presence and abundance of enzymes. 3. Composting. The reaction is that certain types of hazardous waste molecules can be degraded by only one or a very few microbial species, which may not be widely distributed or abundant in nature. The factors important in composting hazardous wastes are those that govern all biological reactions. 4. Aerobic and anaerobic treatment. Hazardous materials are present from low to high wastewater, leachate, and soil concentrations. These wastes are characterized by high organic content, example, up to 40,000 mg per liter total organic carbon, low and high pH, 2 to 12, elevated salt levels, sometimes, over 5%, and the presence of heavy metals and hazardous organics. Hazardous wastes can be treated using either aerobic or anaerobic treatment methods. In aerobic treatment, under proper conditions, microorganisms grow. They need a carbon and energy source, which many hazardous wastes satisfy, nutrients such as nitrogen, phosphorus, and trace metals, and a source of oxygen. Some organisms can use oxidized inorganic compounds nitrate, as a substitute for oxygen. Hazardous waste streams often consist of hydrocarbons leading to higher concentrations of chemical oxygen demand COD. Anaerobic treatment is a sequential biologically destructive process in which hydrocarbons are converted, in the absence of free oxygen, from complex to simpler molecules, and ultimately to carbon dioxide and methane. The treatability of the waste depends upon the susceptibility of the hydrocarbon content to anaerobic biological degradation and on the ability of the organisms to resist the detrimental effect of biologically recalcitrant and toxic organic and inorganic chemicals. Thank you. Happy learning. See you again.